Can you even believe that it's August already and that the seventh Home Assistant update of the year is already here? What happened to the other months? Home Assistant 2022.8 is here with new features as always for us to enjoy, including some home kit improvements, a new integration called repairs, quality of life improvements, and a major and much needed update to a protocol that's been left out in the cold for just a little bit too long. Bluetooth is now a new native first class citizen in Home Assistant with a brand new integration specifically for Bluetooth. So if we back up a little bit, Previously, we've had integrations that use Bluetooth, such as SwitchBot or MiFlora, but those integrations were dependent on different Bluetooth libraries, and in fact, some of them were even deprecated in the previous update because the libraries were no longer being maintained. But this release, we see Bluetooth become its own dedicated integration, which other integrations, like SwitchBot, will then use to communicate. The upshot of this is a much better overall Bluetooth experience for Home Assistant, which I would say has traditionally been its weakest area out of Zigbee, Z-Wave, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now the new Bluetooth integration supports automatic discovery of supported Bluetooth devices and can push device updates to other integrations that use those Bluetooth devices. Even if we just take the SwitchBot integration for example, so SwitchBot who has quite a lot of Bluetooth devices, we see a noticeably better and more reliable experience going from 2022.7 to 2022.8. Firstly, the SwitchBot integration itself now supports the SwitchBot temperature and humidity meter, as well as the SwitchBot contact sensor as new devices, alongside the CurtainBot and original SwitchBot bot, which were already supported. But from my experience so far, reliability of the new integration is much better now and results in much less dropped connections. It's worth mentioning that this doesn't immediately mean that all Bluetooth devices are suddenly perfectly working and anything Bluetooth can connect to Home Assistant now, integrations do still need to be updated and added to use the new Bluetooth integration and some already have been updated, but this does provide a solid base for them to start building from, and so hopefully over the coming months, we are going to see even more devices supported. Really good stuff and looking forward to seeing how this is expanded on. Speaking of Bluetooth, the HomeKit controller integration now has support for Bluetooth-based HomeKit devices. So now you can add battery-powered sensors and devices that are likely using Bluetooth with HomeKit to your Home Assistant 2, which is a great little addition. Another new feature in 2022.8 is called Repairs. This is a new page which shows up in the Systems menu inside of Settings and will essentially find any potential issues or problems in Home Assistant and try to let you know what the fix for that is, whether that be a problem with an integration you have installed or perhaps you're running something that is going to be deprecated in a future release, then that should show up under the Repairs. One thing that would be really cool to see with this, and I'm actually not sure if it does this already or not, but it would be pretty cool if this could give you like almost like an update or an upgrade assistant where it would tell you if your current configuration is compatible with the new version of Home Assistant, including all breaking changes, and then either say, no, everything is cool, or hey, these things need fixed before updating. Or for example, if I'm using, I don't know, the Panasonic integration and it's set up in configuration.yaml, then in the next version, it gets moved into the UI. It would be cool if repairs could say, hey, you know that Panasonic integration that you're using? Well, after the update, you need to set that up in the UI and it's being moved out to the configuration. Like I say, maybe it does this already and that's a thing. I guess we will see in the next update with the 2022.9 update, but that would be a really cool feature to add if it's not there already. Next up, have you ever added a new device to Home Assistant and you end up with a really weird device names that have a bunch of what are seemingly meaningless characters in the name? Well, 2022.8 aims to improve on the naming of entities and devices to make them more standard and consistent. Integrations do need to be updated to follow suit, so that will take some time over the coming months for that to be completed, but roughly 100 integrations have already been done as part of this update, including some of the more popular ones like ZHA, Sonos, Google Cast and Calendar, WLED and so many more. Integrations have also been made easier to find when searching too. Some integrations support multiple brands either because they are similar or in fact they are actually the same product and they're just rebranded, 
So now when you search for an integration, you should now see a more accurate list of compatible integrations for the thing you are searching for. This makes finding integrations for devices that you have that would otherwise be hidden or not easily accessible or obvious much more easy to find and should result in a much better user experience. Now it's time for all of the more minor but still nice additions of this release. Firstly, the Unify integration has been updated so that they can now display updates for your Unify devices right inside of Home Assistant, allowing you to skip or apply updates for those Unify devices. The colors of the Maps page has been adjusted, which should help with viewing accessibility, especially when viewing in dark mode. The LifeX integration has been improved to make it more reliable. You can now view your network information for Home Assistant OS more easily from inside of the Network tab in the UI. And finally, the YoLink integration now supports garage doors as covers. There have also been 10 new integrations added this month too. Most of them are new integrations that take advantage of the Bluetooth, but there are a couple of other additional new ones in there too, as well as two new integrations available to set up in the UI instead of configuration files. As always, make sure to check out the breaking changes section before hitting update. And this month we have a surprisingly small amount of breaking changes, which is always welcome. I don't see anything major at all this month, other than for those of you using the SwitchBot integration. You need to make sure and configure the Bluetooth integration first, which does actually get auto discovered on startup before you continue using the SwitchBot integration. But other than that, a really small amount of breaking changes this month. And there we go, that is another Home Assistant update in the books. It's scary how far through the year we are already. Time is actually flying. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite feature of this release is. For me, it's the Bluetooth support, which is a very needed and welcome addition in my opinion. And even just the SwitchBot integration alone is a big win personally. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Anyways, that is about going to do it from me. Please make sure to drop this video a like if you did in fact enjoy it and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.